Welcome, I'm your astrologer Patricia Tate. I specialize in traditional Western and evolutionary astrology. I'm excited to share this month's astrological forecast with you on the Virgo Pisces eclipse cycle. Please like and subscribe as it helps the channel to grow. If you are new here, welcome. You can learn more about my offerings at willowgracemystic.com. For those of you who've been following me, thank you for support and thank you for sharing your journey with me. On September 17th, 2024, we're going to have the beginning of the next eclipse cycle. It's on the Virgo Pisces axis that's opposite of each other. This is going to be a transformative period where you're going to begin to feel it four to six weeks ahead of time. This cycle, it's going to challenge you to uh, balance your practical with your spiritual. It's making this crucial time for your personal and your collective spiritual evolutionary growth. The Virgo Pisces eclipse cycle, it marks the start of a series of eclipses that's going to push you to look for balance in the detailed earthy nature that's found in Virgo and the mystical dreamy qualities that are of Pisces. This cycle is going to challenge you to refine your routines while exploring the deeper spiritual truths, making this a powerful time for your mind and body transformation. Key dates for the Virgo Pisces eclipse cycle. On the first one I want to draw your attention to is the partial lunar eclipse in Pisces on September 17th, 2024, and it will be at 25 degrees of Pisces. Now this partial lunar eclipse in Pisces, it really will initiate the cycle. It'll start us moving towards urging us to release these emotional baggages that we are carrying with us and to deepen our spiritual awareness. The presence of Neptune, Pisces ruling planet, during this time makes it a potent time for spiritual and emotional cleansing and releasing because Neptune blends or releases or, or scatters the energy, dissolves the energy. The next date is going to be a total lunar eclipse in Virgo on March 14th, 2025. It will be at 23 degrees of Virgo. Now this will be a total lunar eclipse that's really encouraging a focus on all of all of your practical matters, your health, your routine, you a being of service to others, mental, physical, spiritual, health, and well-being. Virgo's ruler is Mercury, and so this will emphasize the need for you to have clear communication communication with anything that's analytical or thinking during this transformative period. The next one is a total lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces on September 7th, 2025, and it will be at 15 degrees of Pisces. Now this is going to be a powerful eclipse that's going to amplify your intuition your emotional sensitivity. With Neptune's influence, this is going to be a time that's going to be ideal for spiritual exploration, releasing of old wounds. The next is on a partial solar eclipse in Virgo on September 21st, 2025 at 29 degrees of Virgo. Remember that 29 degrees is an anoretic degree. It is very important that it means big, huge endings, big, huge closures. And so knowing all of this, this is an insight into practical action. It's solidifying the changes that are initiated within this cycle. So understanding all of this and where we are moving forward, let's dive deeper into the upcoming lunar eclipse cycle, particularly the eclipses that are going to be in Pisces. Eclipses bring about these hard, fast karmic changes. They are like full moons on steroids. They are meant to align you with your true path or your destiny of where you've gotten off course. Lunar eclipses, which occur during full moons, they're these powerful times times of culminations or endings and an opportunity for releasing and letting go. They often bring to light uh, what has been hidden or what is unresolved, urging you to confront these issues head on. In the sign of Pisces, these themes take on deeply emotional and spiritual tones. Pisces is a water sign that's ruled by Neptune. It governs the realm of your dreams, your intuition, you feeling uh, compassion and your or unconsciousness. During a lunar eclipse in Pisces, you are called to release the emotional baggage that has been weighing you down, that whether it's it's unresolved grief or it's lingering guilt or unfulfilled dreams, 
The eclipse energy, it can really bring about intense emotional experiences, but it also offers the opportunity for you to have, to bring about a profound healing. Pisces lunar eclipses, they're especially potent in uh, revealing what was hidden, um, these hidden truths, emotional undercurrents of what's going on beneath the surface. You might find yourself possibly confronting old memories or feelings that you thought were long buried or hidden or just plain forgotten. And so these eclipses, they urge you to release and let go of the past, to embrace forgiveness and allow yourself to heal heal. The process is not always easy. It can involve uh, confronting deep-seated fears or your emotional wounds. However, the release that follows, this can be incredibly liberating. It's about freeing you from your past. These eclipses are highlighting the importance of compassion in your life, both for yourself and for you to have compassion of others. As we navigate these emotional waters, it's going to be crucial for you to be gentle with yourself, recognizing that this is going to be a period of emotional cleansing and spiritual renewal. The influence of Neptune really helps to make this time of of being in tuned, like heightened intuition and for you to gain spiritual insight, allowing you to connect more deeply with your higher self and with the collective unconscious. So uh, uh, the lunar eclipse in Pisces, it's bringing about these endings in these areas of your life that are governed by the sign. So think of artistic endeavors or spiritual practices or emotional connections. This is going to be a time for you to let go of any creative projects that no longer resonate with your heart or with your soul. This is going to be a time to release any spiritual practices that no longer serve your, your emotional or spiritual growth. This can also be a period to examine your emotional connections to people, places, and things and decide which relationships that you need to nurture and which you need to let go and release, freeing yourself to heal and explore new. Neptune being the ruling planet of Pisces plays this huge significant role in the eclipses. Neptune is associated with our dreams, our illusions, its disillusionment of boundaries. During a Pisces lunar eclipse, Neptune's influence can really blur the lines between what is fantasy and what is reality, making this a powerful time for you to explore your inner world through meditation, dream work, creative expression, uh, tapping into the Akashic Records, astral travel, astral projection, tapping into connection to your higher power, spirit, divine, or connecting to um, past loved ones. This is an important time because of all of this connection that's in the outer realm that you need to stay grounded because Neptune can create this sense of confusion or disillusionment. So by both embracing both the mystical and the practical aspects of these eclipses, you can work to navigate this period with clarity and purpose. As we approach the Virgo Pisces eclipse cycle, remember that this will be a time for you to experience deep and spiritual work. This lunar eclipse in Pisces is going to challenge you to release what no longer serves you and to embrace this new level of a spiritual awareness, a connection to your higher power, a connection to your divine. By balancing the practical energy of Virgo with your intuitive, compassionate nature that comes with Pisces, you can navigate these eclipses with grace and emerge stronger on the other side. This month's offerings, Transit Talk webinars. So stay tuned about the upcoming Transit Talk webinars. These are interactive and educational sessions that dive into a different astrological topic each month. They're designed to help you understand the key themes and the influences that are going to help you shape your year ahead. I'm also excited to announce that I'm going to be launching a 
Patreon. This is for those people who are seeking a more in-depth astrological guidance. I'm going to be launching my Patreon soon, so keep an eye out for the official announcement. Be sure to join early for exclusive content and community engagement. You can visit my website at willowgracemystic.com to learn more and to sign up. Subscribe for any specials or insights that come through my email. So you can pick up gift cards for that special someone in your life that are perfect for any occasion. I'm offering um, specials for Virgos, so calling all Virgos, because this is your season. Use the code Virgo10 at checkout to receive your discount. Visit my website to schedule your appointment today and join me live on every other Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I offer live astrology consultations. You can reserve your spot and get in the queue and you can sign up by using the link below. I look forward to connecting with you. So let's dive in. So for Aries Sun and Aries Rising, the Pisces Eclipse is going to be activating your 12th house. Now remember that the 12th house revolves around spiritual healing, its release, its hidden matters. It's all topics of going within to receive guidance in order to heal and renew. So for you, the 12th house is calling you to truly dive deep into your subconscious, to your dreams. Uh, the 12th house represents the hidden parts of your psyche, including any unresolved traumas or or secrets or spiritual matters the eclipse in your 12th house is going to bring up bring to light these hidden fears or past experiences that have been influencing your life and that have kept you from moving forward that have taken um, that have happened to you like behind the scenes this is really going to be an ideal time for spiritual practices like meditation or journaling or therapy in order to um, help you to uncover and release the buried issues that you have you also might find that this is a time to retreat from the world and spend more time in solitude in order for you to re recharge to reflect to renew the energy of this eclipse really supports you releasing these old patterns healing from past wounds and connecting more deeply with your inner self the eclipse in your 12th house and bouncing back and forth between your 12th and your sixth so your day-to-day -day habits remember that this is going to be a time for you to work on deep and spiritual emotional work for you to do it's about releasing karma this lunar eclipse in Pisces is going to challenge you to to truly dig deep and release what no longer serves you to embrace a new level of spiritual awareness through your dreams your intuition your psychic abilities uh, tapping into um, astral travel astral projection um, the Akashic records it'll be a time when you will um, sit with things where you go and withdraw and say, where have I experienced self-sabotage or where have I um, experienced where other people have put their thoughts and their feelings upon me and now I need time to um, work through this to come out and clear these karmic debts to heal and renew. The lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces is going to challenge you to, to just let go and to be in tune to a more spiritual awareness for yourself by balancing the practical energy of your Virgo, your day-to-day -day practices, making sure that your mental, physical, spiritual, emotional health and well-being is in check, taking care of yourself on a day-to-day -day basis, paying attention to your intuition, being uh, using the compassionate nature that comes with Pisces, you can navigate these eclipses with grace and emerge stronger on the other side. So Aries, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Taurus Sun and Taurus Rising, your Pisces house is your 11th house. It's the house of connection with socially, with uh, people, places, and things, your community involvement, future aspirations. I always say that it's your hopes, your wishes, your dreams, your goals, and who do you want to align with or who do you connect with that will help and support you with this. Now, the eclipse in your 11th house is really shining a light on 
all of your social networking, your friendships, your long-term goals. You might find yourself truly reevaluating these groups and what is your part within them and questioning whether do they still align with your values and your aspirations. This might be a time when you might experience changes in some of your friendships. This could be uh, a time when you're going to be looking at certain friendships or certain relationships and they may end. They may dissolve naturally on their end on their own or this could be a time of somebody shifting or moving away. You might meet new people um, because it'll be bringing people and places and things to you that can inspire you to pursue your goals more passionately. The 11th house relates to your hopes and your dreams and your goals with your future. So this eclipse, it might prompt you to let go of any outdated goals that you have that just no longer resonate with you and that now you are um, looking at this is who this is what I want to become this is who I want to become I need to focus on connecting with like-minded individuals who support my growth and can contribute to me and my journey Having the eclipse in your 11th house, it's a time for you to remember that this is going to be a time of deep emotional and spiritual work of what is coming to you and what are you releasing and people and our goals are very connected with who we are. And so the lunar eclipse in Pisces is going to challenge you to release and let go of what no longer serves you. Embrace this new level of heightened um, spiritual awareness by balancing the practical energy of Virgo with the intuitive, compassionate nature of Pisces of this is where I'm going. This is now I'm elevating uh, my connection to people. I want to be connected with people on a different um, uh, a different wavelength, a different energy level. And so this is helping you to navigate with grace and emerge stronger on the other side. So Taurus, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Gemini Sun and Gemini Rising, this eclipse is activating your 10th house, which is your career, your job, your responsibility, your legacy that you want to leave behind. It's the top of your chart. It has to do with not just your public life, but authority. And so with the eclipse in your 10th house, this can bring about major shifts that could occur in your career or your public life, you being in the limelight. The 10th house rules your professional achievements. It's about your reputation. It's how you're perceived by other people in the world. If the uh, the tenth house is up here, it's how people can view you by looking up at you. And so you might experience a turning point within your career, such as a promotion or a change in job roles, or even a complete career shift. This could be a retirement, a leaving, um, a letting go. This time of letting go of your professional goals of this no longer serves me. I know now need to embrace new opportunities that truly align with um, who I am more closely with my passion and my values. There has You have gone through this um, shift in your life and now the energy of this eclipse is bringing about issues of authority or leadership to the forefront and it's challenging you to truly step up, uh, step into your role as um, a greater responsibility, taking on more responsibility, or to reassess how you exert authority over others in your career. This is going to be a powerful time for you to redefine your professional identity and set the stage for you to have this long-term success. Having the eclipses happening in your 10th and 4th house generally means a huge huge shift within your career of leaving something, letting something go, and possibly a move that comes within it. It's the balancing between these two areas where there's going to be this deep emotional spiritual work that needs to happen within you. Being aligned with something that no longer aligns with you spiritually, you will be addressing that. The challenge will be, how can I let go? How can I release? How can I embrace this new level of spiritual awareness of what do I want to do? How do I want to be seen? 
by balancing the practical energy of Virgo, your home, and with the intuitive, compassionate nature that Pisces brings, this is an opportunity for you to navigate these eclipses with grace and emerge stronger on the other side, knowing that you will be in the right place at the right time doing or connecting with the people that you are supposed to be aligned with. So Gemini, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Cancer Sun and Cancer Rising, the eclipse cycle is going to activate your ninth house. So the ninth house uh, is in a harmonious aspect. It's in a trine with who you are, your identity. It's you saying, I'm ready to focus on higher learning, my belief system. I'm ready to explore. I am ready for uh, taking a class, taking a, a workshop, publishing something. The, the ninth house being a focus uh, brings about uh, the emphasis on on types of higher education, travel, your philosophical beliefs with a period of you wanting to connect with uh, intellectually and uh, to engage in spiritual exploration with other people. The ninth house is cross-cultural experiences in foreign people, places, and things where you um, might be drawn to uh, expand your own horizons through study or through travel or engaging in possibly uh, a new belief system. The ninth house also governs your worldview. So this might, uh, you might find yourself questioning these long held beliefs that you've had and looking for or seeking out deeper meaning or, or deeper truths in things. This eclipse could really prompt you to let go of any outdated ideologies or complete a phase of study or plan significant travels that could broaden your perspective and uh, embrace this period that's about an opportunity to grow intellectually and for you to grow um, spiritually and emotionally, to connect with other people um, on a higher level or a higher plane. As you approach the Virgo Pisces eclipse cycle, remember that this will be a time of uh, deep emotional and spiritual work of what am I letting go of and what am I accepting new? What am I going to embrace new? And this is you having an open mind to different thoughts and ideas and belief systems. And this could come through classes or through studying or through you sharing. Um, the, the ninth house could be not just taking a class, but also where the student becomes the teacher. And so you saying that I need to balance the practical of Virgo in the way that I communicate and share with others with my intuitive, compassionate side that is Pisces. And I need to work to navigate this with grace and emerge stronger on the other side with an open mind. Because it's in a harmonious aspect to your first house, this is you letting go and letting flow. Let go, let flow, and embracing wherever the water sends you or takes you. So Cancer, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Leo Sun and Leo Rising, the eclipse cycle is going to activate your eighth house, which represents um, the house of birth, death, and rebirth, and transformations. It's also the house of shared resources, or the house of deep bonding, deep psychological growth. The eighth house belongs to you connected with a business partner, significant other, or exes, or family members where you are connected with them in a significant way. And so having the, this eclipse activating your eighth house, it brings a focus on all types of matters of you going through transformation, shared resources, deep psychological growth where that's associated with significant life changes, such as inheritance or debt or taxes or your intimate partnerships. During the eclipses, you might face these challenges or related changes uh, that are focused on what are your shared assets and what are your shared finances? Like what do you, how are you connected to others and in what way? And so this is prompting you to reassess 
What about your financial partnerships? This could be where your money is invested, where your retirement is invested, or the need or desire to do that. Or on a deeper level, the eighth house, it governs all types of transformation and an opportunity for a rebirth, making this a, po a personal time for you to have personal growth coming from within that other people will not see until the butterfly has come out of its cocoon you might feel compelled to confront some of your fears or to explore the depths of your psyche um, to release old and emotional wounds. This is a period for deep introspection and of healing. It's allowing you to emerge stronger and more resilient. The eighth house is where we uh, talk about the taboo topics and we bring them to the surface in order to understand or to heal and renew from them. And so as we approach the Virgo Pisces eclipse cycle, the Virgo being in your second house of your self-worth, the eighth house is what needs to be healed first. So that will be uh, deep emotional and spiritual work that you need to work on of what do you covet? What do you hold? What do you need to let go of that no longer serves you? And to embrace this new higher octave of spiritual awareness. And so by balancing the practical energy of the your self-worth and your intuitive, compassionate nature of how you connect with others and how that blends and dissolves and changes and evolves who you are, you can definitely navigate these eclipses with grace and emerge stronger on the other side. So Leo, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Virgo Sun and Virgo rising, this eclipse cycle, the first eclipse, is going to be activating your seventh house. I always say that the seventh house is you plus somebody else. You with a business partner, a significant other, a best friend. I'm adding in open enemies and exes. I'm also going to add in clients and connections with others. This is not just the house of love, but it's the house of, of cooperation and public um, connection of handling conflict and legal matters. It is you connected with somebody else. It's the plus one. And so it's partnerships. And how do you find this balance? And so the eclipse activating your seventh house of partnerships is really bringing into focus your closest relationships. Now, this could be a time of truly significant shifts in your personal and your professional partnerships. You might find yourself reevaluating the dynamics within these relationships, maybe seeking some greater balance or there could be ending of connections that are just no longer fulfilling. This could be a client moving on and no longer needing your service anymore. The seventh house also rules contracts and agreements. And so this eclipse might prompt you to um, re renegotiate some terms or to make these decisions about these important um, partnerships that you have in your life. So this can be an ideal time for you to focus on how do I create harmony? And if you're um, single, this eclipse can definitely bring in a new significant uh, relationship or a partnership within your life, or it could help you to release the past relationships that were holding you back. As you navigate the me, we sector of your life, because the eclipses are going to be bouncing back and forth between your identity and who you are linked up with, it's reminding you that this will be a deep emotional time that you need to do the spiritual work between who are you and identifying your identity with what is linked with other people. It's going to challenge you to release those people, places, and things that just no longer serve you and embrace this new level of connectedness and spiritual awareness that you can find through trust and compassion within other people. So by balancing the practical energy of Virgo and this intuitive, compassionate nature of Pisces where you wanna blend and be at one and be comfortable with others, you can definitely navigate these eclipses with grace and emerge um, stronger on the other side. So Virgo, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe.
So for Libra Sun and Libra Rising, the eclipses are going to be activating your sixth house. It's going to be toggling back and forth between your sixth and your twelfth, but I want to talk about the sixth first because this is about your daily routines, your service. The sixth house represents your mental, physical, spiritual health, well-being. It's where we find a guide, where we find a mentor. It's where we find a balance between our home and our in our career. And so the eclipse in the sixth house is emphasizing your health, your daily routines, your service to others. This is going to be a time that you're going to want to focus on your physical well-being, assessing your day-to-day -day habits, your routines to see what needs to change within you. And this will be uh, uh, you looking at certain aspects of your daily life and saying, I need to let go of any unhealthy habits or situations that are draining your energy. The sixth house also relates to your work environment of how do you serve others? And so you might experience these changes in your job or how you approach your career or how you approach um, your day-to-day -day responsibilities within your job. This is going to be a period that you're going to want to establish healthier routines, prioritize self-care, and create a more balanced lifestyle. Focusing on integrating these practices that support your overall well-being and contribute to your long-term health. The sixth house also refers to pets. And so at this time, pets could come and go within our lives. Knowing that um, you're experiencing this between your 12th and your 6th house, the Virgo and Pisces cycle, remember that this is going to be a time for you to do the, the deep emotional and spiritual work. Why do I feel addicted to this? Why? How can I give up this habit? And so this lunar eclipse in Pisces is really going to challenge you to release what no longer serves you, to embrace this new level of connectedness, this new level of healing, the spiritual awareness awareness by balancing out this practical energy of Virgo and the intuitive compassionate nature of Pisces you can navigate these eclipses with grace and emerge stronger and healthier on the other side so Libra I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations for private consultation you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com and to get updates as soon as they're released please subscribe. So for Scorpio Sun and Scorpio Rising, this eclipse is occurring in your fifth house of fun and joy and children and romance, taking a risk. It's in a water sign and your rising sign is a water sign. So this is in a harmonious aspect, promoting you to heal and renew. This is tapping into creativity or personal joy, you making time for yourself. So the eclipse is going to be highlighting all types of creativity for you romance you bringing in personal fun joy and pleasure it's going to be a time that you're going to want to reconnect with your inner child with what truly brings you happiness and fulfillment you might feel inspired to pursue creative projects or hobbies that allow you to express yourself more openly and more freely the fifth house also governs romance and children and so so this eclipse might bring changes within your romantic life or in relationship to children either with your own children or things that your children are going through or tapping into your inner child you might find yourself letting go of creative endeavors or romantic connections that just no longer resonate with you um, in order for you to make room for these new sources of joy and inspiration embracing these activities that truly ignite that inner fire your passion your desires and bring out this sense of playfulness within your life. This is going to be a time for you to focus on self-expression and for you to allow your true self to shine. Having the eclipses activate your 11th house of networking and your 5th house, this is a time for deep emotional and spiritual work with I need to bring joy to me because I've been focused on everybody else. The lunar eclipse in Pisces is challenging you to really let go and release what no longer serves you, to, to have a level of spiritual awareness and connectedness to joy 
and pleasure. By balancing the practical energy of Virgo, the intuitive compassionate energy that comes with Pisces, you're learning to navigate these eclipses with grace and emerging stronger on the other side that I have to take care of me first before I give and care for others. So Scorpio, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Sagittarius Sun and Sagittarius Rising, your fourth house of home and family and traditions. And so this is also about emotional foundations. Usually when the eclipses activate your fourth and your 10th house, it usually means like a shift in home or a shift in career. And so the fourth house is bringing about the attention for you to focus on home, family, and what do you need in order to build this strong foundation for yourself emotionally or physically. And so this is going to be a period of introspection for you because the moon is saying go within where you might feel that you need to like reassess your living situation or your relationship with your family members. This could be parents, grandparents, and or children, anybody that lives within the home or that has built the foundation of which you consider your your ancestry. The fourth house, it governs uh, your roots, your sense of security. So you might experience changes within your domestic life, such as moving or renovating, or uh, this could be redefining your role within the family or within the household. And so emotional issues that are related to your upbringing, they could come to the surface. This is, uh, I look at it as, a, as an opportunity for you to heal and release any of the baggage or the pain that came from not agreeing with everything or the things that have happened to you, this eclipse is encouraging you to create your own nurturing home environment that supports your emotional well-being that aligns with your personal values. It's about you and your foundation. You focusing on building this strong foundation that provides comfort and security for you in your life. Having the eclipses occur in your 10th and your 4th house is really going to push your life into um, a need for change. Uh, this is deep and uh, emotional and spiritual work of I need a shift. I need a change. Challenging you to release um, what no longer serves you as I'm going with this because it's always been the status quo and wanting to connect with I need to be with people who have the same spiritual awareness as I do, who have the same feelings as I do, who want to explore and do things as I do. And so you're looking to balance your practical energy of Virgo and the intuitive, compassionate nature that comes with Pisces. And so to navigate these eclipses, you're working to change this and be at one with creating a strong and stable foundation that you will have, uh, that you will emerge stronger on the other side. So Sagittarius, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Capricorn Sun and Capricorn Rising, the, your first eclipse is going to be occurring in your third house. Now, this is in a harmonious aspect to who you are, and it's the house of communication, learning, technology, siblings, relationships, neighbors, people that are within our community. And so the eclipse occurring in your third house is really emphasizing how are you communicating, how are you learning, tapping into the relationships with your neighbors, your siblings, your cousins, and you focusing in on how do you express yourself in these relationships? How do you connect with those people that are in close proximity to you? You might find that your communication style, it might need to evolve. This could be through email, phone, text, or the way that you are um, speaking or sharing. How do you let go of outdated ways of thinking or of speaking that no longer serves you? And this is you looking at your thought process and saying, um, this could be an old way or an old thought process of uh, because 
it's it's it is old it's like re i need to release and let go of what is old it is you tapping into your connection to others and how are you connected to them and letting go of what no longer serves you the third house also relates to like short trips learning and so at this time you might be drawn to explore um, new subjects, new classes, new workshops, things that are within your neighborhood, uh, learning about things that are going on or engaging in activities that truly stimulate your mind. The third house is about engaging in your mind and learning and sharing and communicating with others. So all of these are options that can happen over the next 18 months. It could bring a relationship change with siblings or with your close neighbors, prompting you to address any unresolved issues that you have or um, strengthen these con uh, these connections that you have with others. Like if you haven't seen somebody in a long while, uh, re uh, like reconnecting with them in order to establish that bond again. Focusing on how do I expand my knowledge? How do I improve my communication skills? How do I foster this harmonious relationship within my immediate environment with my neighbors, my siblings, my, my people that I am close knit with? So as you approach the eclipses going on between your third and your ninth house, you are going to be looking at... Um, I need to do the work and this is deep and it's emotional and what am I willing to let go of? What am I willing to release? What am I willing to own? Um, the lunar eclipse in Pisces is challenging you to let go and embrace this new level of communication and spiritual awareness, having an open mind about what other people's thoughts and feelings are. And by balancing the practical energy that comes with Virgo with the intuitive compassionate nature that comes from Pisces, you are learning to navigate these eclipses with ease and grace in all forms of communication and learning and acceptance and expanding your horizons. So Capricorn, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Aquarius Sun and Aquarius Rising, your Pisces house is your second house. It is the house of your resources, your money, your finances, your self-worth. It's people, places, and things that you value, and it's what do you need in order to feel safe and secure. It's your skill set. And so it's going to be toggling back and forth between what is yours and what belongs to other people, where you're connected or, or where your money or your resources are invested into. So the eclipses occurring in your second house brings a, a focus on your personal finances. It's your skill set, your personal values, your self-worth. And so this is going to be a time that you're going to reassess how do you manage your money? How do you manage your resources? You taking time to lay everything out and reflect on what truly is important to you. You might experience some changes in your financial situation, or this could prompt you to reevaluate your in income, your spending habits, your earnings. The second house also governs your sense of self-worth. So the eclipse might highlight an area where you need to build confidence for yourself and let go of any material attachments that no longer serve you for your growth. Um, focusing on how do you align with your financial decisions and how does this align with your core values and ensuring that you have this the resources that can support your long-term goals. You're literally looking over where do you want to go and what do you want to have and what do you need in order to feel comfortable and secure with your skill set and your money and resources. And so this is a time to cultivate this deep uh, sense of self-worth, recognizing your inherent value and your strengths in order to move forward with doing better and looking at where is my money best spent? Where is my time best spent? Having the eclipses occur between your second house and your eighth house, you are looking at what is yours and what is combined with other people 
whether through investments or the eighth house is the house of deep psychological. So this could be you looking at your money and saying, what is my attachment to this? And why do I have this attachment to this? Am I willing to release this and let this go? And so the lunar eclipse in Pisces is really going to challenge you to release what no longer serves you? Are you holding on to things that are just not that important? And because if you're, if, if everything is full, you have no room for anything else. And so this is a let go, let flow, make room for more abundance within your life. You accepting the energy of the Pisces to take you where you need to go and where you need to flow. So Aquarius, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get up updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. For Pisces Sun and Pisces Rising, this eclipse is occurring in your first house of self. It is so important because it's all about your identity. This is about self-growth for you, new beginnings, fresh starts, clean slates, and it, I cannot tell you how important this is. This is, I always say that this the house is about your business card, your website. It's about your health. It's about things that you want to launch. It's your body. It's you being seen. It's your desires, your interests. Having an eclipse toggle between who you are and who you are with other people because the Virgo house is your seventh house of partnership. This is bringing this powerful focus on you your identity, your personal growth, new beginnings that are going to be brought to you. But the transformation period is where you may feel compelled to redefine who do you, or who are you and how do you present yourself to the world. The first house is um, making you feel like you are compelled to redefine yourself. Like I need to change my identity. Does this come with a marriage? Does this come with a divorce? Does this come with the birth of a child? Does this come with education? So now like there's a label at the end or, or with um, like maybe you become a Reiki master. It's the identity of, it's all about you and your identity. It also governs your physical appearance and your overall approach to your life. So maybe you decide now to make some changes to your lifestyle or to your behavior or to better reflect who you truly are and so the the eclipse it might encourage you to like let go of this is the old me and and release the old identities or the ways that no longer resonate with who you are evolving and changing and growing into it's shedding the old you so it could be going through your whole wardrobe it could be um changing your hair changing your makeup changing the the name of what you want to be identified with focusing on personal growth embracing these changes that are like unfolding as they as they occur in your life like having to roll with it as they lead to the, a, a deeper understanding of who you are and where you are now going to be headed over the next 18 months coming into an alignment embracing this transformative energy that comes with the eclipse allowing the universe to guide you towards a more authentic and empowered version of who you are. Having the eclipses occur in your first house, knowing that you are stepping into foreign, ter like it's foreign territory of, I don't know what this is going to look like in the end, but I know that I am not this anymore. I need to ju uh, just change and grow and evolve. And so toggling between the first and the seventh house people places and things like your partnerships they're going to change and grow and evolve because you are shifting and so this is you being in touch with a new level of spiritual awareness a, a raising your vibration by balancing um, partnership and who you are intuitively growing and changing into, um, I encourage you to step into the unknown. Go to where it flows. Go to where you are most comfortable. Having the eclipses in your first house is this beautiful energy of shifting, changing, and like a butterfly coming out of its cocoon.
So Pisces, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology forecast. For private consultations, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe.